and revivalists during the worship when the Lord was downloading some of the others. And you may have heard some of this before. But they told me loud and clear, you're going to be out of here sooner than you think. The need to be out of here is coming sooner than you think. And I know you shared with me about selling off some chairs. Take it for what it's worth. You want it. He said, leave at least 200. Because 200 is coming sooner than you think and you're going to need them. So it'll bear witness with your spirit and it'll come to fruition if it was the Lord that I'm hearing from. Praise God. Turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 14. How long do we have tonight? Uh, I know it's a Tuesday night. Matthew 14. How long do I have when I come? Hey, to, you know, go ship yeah, as long as, you know, there's still bodies in the seat. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. No, I do want to honor this man and woman of God. Y'all are fruit of their labor yeah. and of their tenacity. Amen. You are the reward. Amen. And you may have to laugh on a few of them here, but now you are the reward of their persistence. But we've known them for years. We've seen the praying, the plowing that they've done, the in the mall, then buying that one, then this one, and all the harassment here. And I know some of you have seen a lot of that. But it's because of their faithfulness to continue to stand when many. I believe there's some prophetic in this. They stood when many would have given up and quit. And because they didn't give up and quit. That's why this isn't going to be big enough. That's why to hold on to at least 200 chairs. But for this many to come out short notice on a Tuesday night. I ain't got anywhere near this come out on a Monday night for prayer. My Wednesday night Bible study, I ain't got this many coming out. So God's moving here. God's blessing here. He moves in our services. But I need more people like you all that will come out in the middle of the week to get some. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I bless you up front. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Okay, come on up. We'll get to Matthew. <laughs> that just confirms what the Lord just said to you. He had given me this prophetic word for the body here. And it goes along with just what the Lord just spoke to him. The Lord says it's time to begin to see it and believe it. See it and believe it. Yes. See it and believe it. Amen. You have eyes to see it. I have placed them inside of you. A heart to believe it. I have called you to pray and I have called you to obey. Now cast all your cares upon me. When you give them to me, then you will need to believe. And then the faith that I've placed inside of you will then begin to arise. Take a hold of my living word. And see it done for you. I'm calling you to take a step into the supernatural. The supernatural realm where I've called you to be. See it done. Don't look with the natural eye. Because I have given you all a supernatural eye. To see through. To take place where I have called you to take place. And to be where I have called you to be. It's time to begin to see it. And it's time to begin to believe it. And it's all going to begin in a supernatural realm. The supernatural realm is coming to you. It's coming forth. Okay. Things are going to begin to come forth in your life and in your ministry. Today is the day, says the Lord, for you to begin to believe and begin to see it. Yeah. Now is the day and it's the time. I'm calling you to it, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's not enough just for them to see it and believe it. And that seeing it isn't talking naturally. See it with your spiritual eyes. Believe what God's showing you. We need all of you to get on board. The vision isn't just for the leaders of the house. They're to share the vision and y'all are to run with it. Know the vision tarries. Wait for it. I love this part. Because it will surely come. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, Matthew 14. <laughs> and 
I know y'all familiar with this story, but this is good. Mm. I've been chomping at the biz ever since I knew I was coming. Well, I kept hearing, I'm not going to, well, if you're on Facebook, you know the title, but oh, I've kept hearing, it's just the title of this message, ringing in my spirit since Sunday. But verse 22, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the notice, before I even get into the rest of it, it's already windy. Yeah. Okay? And when the disciples saw him, oh now, back to verse 45. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. <laughs> and they cried out for fear. Come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came to him and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. I know you're familiar with this story. There's all kinds of different angles that I could even preach from it. We can talk about how Peter got out of the boat, and as I said earlier, it was already windy. Already windy, waves already blown, but he had his eyes fixed on Jesus. And as we read this story, he said, if it's you, command me to come. Another translation says, bid me to come. And he came. He got out of the boat, walked on water, did something nobody else but Jesus did, has ever done. Yeah. Yeah. But he got his eyes off Jesus, focused on the wind and the waves, and began to sink. Then Jesus rebuked him for his little or lack of faith. We could focus on the fact that he got his eyes off Jesus, and we can learn from that. Keep your eyes on Jesus when the storm's raging, and you'll keep moving forward. Or we could focus on what about all the others that just sat in the boat? My thing is, and I get on this a lot, at least he got out of the stinking boat. Yeah, he got his eyes off Jesus. Yeah, he began to sink, but he got out of the boat. He did something nobody else has ever done. He walked on water. Have you tried that lately? Yeah. I'll go out in a puddle and my feet will still touch the ground and get wet. But he did something that nobody else had ever done before. And people will, and I get it, we can learn from that, but the dog on him because he got his eyes off Jesus. My thing is, he experienced the supernatural in a way that nobody else ever did. And even the other onlookers in the boat that just sat there. They could have experienced that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I often wonder what were they thinking. Well, there's that crazy Peter again. <laughs> oh, just trying to draw attention to himself. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what they were thinking. Yeah. But I'd rather be a wet water walker yeah. than a dry boat yeah. sitter yeah. any day of the week. Yeah. But my thing is, and actually this is the title of the message. The title of this message is Go For It. Okay. Go For It. If you want to experience the supernatural, and I'm going to get on different areas, you just need to go for it. Yes. Yeah. When Jesus speaks to you to come, you need to come. When he tells you to go, you need to go. If there's a promise in his word and you're not experiencing it right now, you need to believe God for it. Mm -hmm. You need to put some work, some actions along oh, with your faith yeah. and believe God to move mightily in your life. Yeah. But he's saying it loud and clear. Tonight to you, Cleveland Revival Center, it's time to go for it. Yeah. Whatever the it is in your life as a corporate body, or as an individual. Yes. If you want to, and we do, and we talk a lot, man, we want the signs, the wonders, the healings, the miracles. Right. We want to see revival. We want to see the transformed lives. Well, you got to go for it. Yeah. Well, how do we go for it? We go for it when we pray. Yeah. We go for it when we fast. Yeah. We go for it when we get out of the boat, even if everybody else is just sitting back. Oh, there's Cleveland Revival Center again. Oh, there's that West Geiger again. Oh, there's that Jerry Rob. Oh, there's that Firehouse Church again. I don't give a rip what anybody thinks but the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I'm going for it. I'm going for full-blown revival. I'm going for signs, wonders, healings, and miracles. I'm going to win our city. And we're not the only one to do our part in reaching those that God's called us to reach. I'm going for it where the fire of God is concerned. My Bible tells me my God is an all-consuming fire. 
but he won't pour out his fire on an empty altar. So I'm like, here I am, Lord. I ain't got to put some lamb, sheep, or goat on it. I'm the altar, or I'm on the altar. I present my body as a living sacrifice, yeah. holy and acceptable to him. And when I do, he pours out his fire. Yes. Yes. I love it when we come here because the fire's here. Yes. Joy's here. I've guest preachers come into our place, and well, I can tell I'm in the firehouse church because it's hot in here. And we got the AC going when it gets real hot in the summer. We got fans blowing. You're still just sweating. It's the fire of God. But I'm going to continue to go for it. So we need to go for it. That's right. CRC. There's so much that the Lord wants each and every one of us to do, and it's going to require faith to do it. See, going for it requires faith. It requires faith to buy that building or to rent that building or to buy those chairs. It requires faith to gather together on a Tuesday yeah, night, yeah, on a holiday yeah. week, and believe God for a mighty outpouring. Yeah. Yeah. Takes faith to gather together, regardless of how many for the years that I know this man has gathered together and prayed and seek God and yeah. had Friday night meetings and Sunday morning meetings. Hallelujah. And some come and some going and all that. I praise God to see this amount here. Yeah. Again, it blesses me on a Tuesday night. Hallelujah. Amen. That shows me that God's doing something. Yeah. And he's doing it because y'all have been going for it. Yeah. Again, the word of the Lord is keep going for it. Yeah. But don't just keep going for it as a corporate body for what God wants to do here. Do that. But there's things in your life. There's some of you in this prophetic right now. Holy Ghost is talking. There's some of you, you put some things on the shelf because it didn't happen in your time frame. Or maybe there was you had a vision and you went for it, but it fell apart. The Lord says, go for it again. Get that thing off the shelf. See, we get a prophetic word, and yes, I believe there's God's timing in it. There's a time, season. Ecclesiastes tells us for everything under the sun. Well, sometimes we can get a prophetic word and jump out. We can get out of the boat, quote, too soon. Well, we need to be led of the Spirit in it. Well, just because you might have missed it doesn't mean it wasn't a word from the Lord. And Paul told Timothy, spoke to him concerning warring over those prophetic words. You need to use prophetic words that you've got and do some warfare with that word. Yes. Amen. What weapon, main weapons the enemy have, did God really say? So you'll get a prophetic word or he preaches a word, immediately the enemy comes against it. He gives you a powerful prophetic word, whatever it has to do with the ministry or whatever. Immediately, the enemy comes against it. With stuff you see in the natural, it looks like, dang, no way this is going to happen. And then he's, did God really say, da, 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 da? Your response needs to be, yes, low life, God did really say. And then you continue to decree yeah. and declare what God said. Amen. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. I get a more prophetic word out. God, you said, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. yeah. And whether it's the timing for it or not, I continue to stand on it yeah. and believe God for it. Some of you all, and again, because I just heard that a couple seconds ago in my spirit, some of you have put some things on the shelf. And God's saying, now's the time to go for it. Okay. Whether it's a ministry, whether it's a business opportunity, an idea, something God's given you, you got to be willing to get out of the boat. Mm -hmm. Don't be like the other nitwits that just sat there. Y'all yeah. right. might learn some new words from me tonight. <laughs> they ain't new, they've been around for years. Y'all just ain't heard them up here in Cleveland. <laughs> Nitwit, low life. <laughs> but I admire Simon Peter. Yeah, he put his foot in his mouth multiple times. Thought he was going to rebuke Jesus when Jesus said what was going to happen to him. Get thee behind me, Satan. You don't have the words of God. I mean, prior to that, he's like, who do men say that I am? And who do men say that I am? Simon Peter's the only one that got it right. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Next thing you know, get thee behind me, Satan. Then denies he even knows him three times, called off and crowed off in shame. But at least he was there. I'm in all kinds of messages tonight. Was there on the day of Pentecost? Yes. yes. Got set on fire for God preached and at least 3,000. Because they say back then that only included men. So more than that, at least 3,000 got saved, set on fire. Yes. Blazed a trail. Jesus. So people can dog on him all they want. He's one of my heroes of the scriptures. Because he'd get knocked down, he'd get back up. Yeah. I read a, a story the other day. There was a guy that fell down six times, had fallen down, I think, three or four times. 
And he told the man standing there hovering over him, he says, the Bible says the righteous fall six times and get up seven. <laughs> Sheriff said that don't work when you're getting a DUI test done. <laughs> Compliments of Facebook. <laughs> but we can learn from Simon Peter. Yes, keep your eyes on Jesus, whether the storm's raging or not. Again, it was already raging. So we can learn from all that. But the main thing we need to learn is that he went for it. And when God gives you a word, whether something in the written word jumps out to you, or he speaks to you prophetically, confirming something even that he spoke to you, you need to go for it. Too many times we just sit back expecting God to do something when he's telling us to get out of the boat. He's telling us to do something. He told me years ago when I first started this ministry, every time you take a step of faith and obedience to me, I'll meet you there. Now when I'm talking about going for it, I'm talking about go forth in faith, go forth in obedience to him. I'm not talking about foolish presumption where you just think God's going to do it because it's something goofy you want. That's when you hear from God. Or God places the desire in you for it. Go for it and he releases you. Then you got the other extreme. God's spoken to you. You've already had 15 confirmations and you're still sitting there. <laughs> Or then I'll hear people, and this may mess up some of y'all's theology. Well, I throw a fleece before God. That was one time under the Old Testament. They weren't full of the Holy Spirit like we are. Y'all don't need to be throwing fleeces out there. You think the devil can't hear that? God, if you want me to do this, let this happen. The devil can real easily poof. And then you out in a mess. No, hear from God. Get your confirmations if you need them. But he wants us to mature even beyond that. Then some people, and I, I believe it, prophecies for confirmation of what God's already spoken to you. Well, some goofballs just aren't listening, so he'll use a prophet or somebody to speak something to him. He's been trying to tell him all along. Amen. So even though I believe con uh, prophecies primary confirmation, if you ain't listening to him on a regular basis, he can use the prophet Amen. to sit there and, hello, yeah. fly, you in there? <laughs> to get you to do what he's wanting you to do all along. But it's time for some of you to begin to go for it. Yeah. There are ministries some of you need to step out into and just go for it. Yes. They can't do it all themselves. Amen. It's not meant for them to do it all themselves. Yeah. No, so whether it's them asking you to, oh God, that's not my gift. <laughs> Heard that one. That's not my gift. Well, if there's a need there, step up and fill it. Yeah. God will honor that. If you're faithful in the small... Then he'll lead you into what, quote, your gift is. Yes. Yes, he will. But if there's a need here, you need to begin to fill it. Get out of the boat. Because when you're faithful again with another man's, he'll give you yours as well. Right. Some of you need to go forth in it and selling out. To... I'm going to get under some of y'all's crawl tonight. But that's all right, Holy Ghost. Some of y'all need to go for it and selling out to God full on. Quit backpedaling and compromising. Uh -huh. Don't stone me in this Presbyterian church now. <laughs> I say that because I was raised Presbyterian. I went to the Presbyterian Church of C&E, Christmas and Easter. <laughs> but some of y'all, you keep one step forward, two steps back. Mm -hmm. God, I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to be faithful every time the doors open. I'm going to start giving. I'm going to start doing this, start doing that. And then old Slewfoot, the enemy, comes in and starts messing with you. And then you back off again. It gets too hot from the attacks of the enemy. You sit back down. No, you just need to go for it. Yeah. Come hell or high water. Come, on, come what may, no matter what it is. Yeah. Hey, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard against you. No weapon formed. didn't say no weapon will form against you. It says no weapon formed against you will prosper. Yeah. 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 No weapon formed against me. Then you crawl back in your little hole. No. Get back up in the race. Continue to run your race. Yes. Continue to go for it. Yes. See, the enemy knows your buttons. Yes, yes, he does. Yes, he does. We'll never admit it as spouses, but we know what buttons to push. Yeah. They really get our spouses going, right? Yeah. Well, he knows what your buttons are. Yeah. Well, all I got to do is push this button. She'll quit giving. All I got to do is push this button. He'll quit opening up that Bible. All I got to do is push this button and they'll just start cussing and fussing and getting mad at God and all that. So he knows what buttons to push. Yeah. I like to use the illustration of a vending machine. 
I put, whether it's a dollar or whatever it is, pull the Kit Kat, one Kit Kat bar normally, comes out. Well, it's the same way. The enemy knows your buttons. He knows what to push. Yeah. You want him to quit pushing that button? Quit giving him what he's wanting. Amen. He knows I do this, you're going to react in anxiety. I do this, you're going to react in worry. And for some of you mamas out there, if it offends you, that's all right. It's for you and you've got to forgive me. It's Bible. <laughs> there is no exception in the Bible concerning worry. I can't help but worry they're my children. I can't help but worry they're my grandchildren. My Bible tells me be anxious for nothing. Yeah. Except your kids and your grandkids. No, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. And when you do that, the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart, or guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So the devil knows, oh, i got to do this where the finances are concerned, and they'll start worrying. Oh, i got to do this where the children or grandchildren are concerned, and they'll start worrying, and they'll get anxious. No, you just need all in. Mm -hmm. yes. Find another title for this. It's go for it. Go for it all in. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm all in. Yes. I think it's Ezekiel talks about the river, ankle deep, knee deep, waist yeah. deep. No, you need to get all the way in the river, baby. Yeah. I was all the way in when I was in the world. I know he was probably an angel back then, but BC. But I wasn't. I was all in where the worldly things are concerned. But when I gave my heart and life to Christ, when He radically saved me in a guard shack in Korea up by the North North Korea at the DMZ in a guard shack in a ammo holding area. I got saved. Nobody else. Me and Jesus. Amen. Then weeks later found a spirit-filled Christian men's group and I didn't know what spirit-filled was or nothing. And I go walking in because I couldn't go to the clubs no more and drink and party. God took that desire out of me. So that's a whole other thing. You truly saved, he'll take those desires for the worldly yeah. things out of you. Yeah. If you're still desiring and you're still lusting and you're still doing all that, you've got to question whether you really saved or not. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You just need to go for it and get full on saved. But I go walking into the spirit building men's group. Guy comes to the door and again, these were all GIs. And we're in South Korea, but back at our post. And he goes, Praise God, brother, you saved. And I said, yes. And he goes, well, you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I'm like, well, I don't know what that is. I was baptized as a little baby. I was sprinkled. He goes, no, that's not what we're talking about. We'll talk about that afterwards. And they sang some choruses, and I couldn't tell you. The only one I remember is the Hallelujah Chorus. It's the one Benny Hinn does, a lot of his crusades, yeah. anointing all on it. And I didn't even know what the anointing was back then. <laughs> But at the end, they sat me down, fully explained salvation, Holy Ghost, all that laid hands on me. Fire of God, brother, first time in my life. Lit me up, top of my head to the soles of my feet. Wrecked me, messed me up. I'm on the bus going back to my post. And the Lord, first time that, well, there's one other time he spoke to me prior to that. But I mean, he's just downloading stuff. Radically changed. All in. Just go for it. Amen. Then I got stationed at Fort Hood, Texas, and we go there, and I told her, I said, we got to find a church like what I experienced over there, yeah. even though it wasn't even a church, just some men that met. They're on fire for God. i got to experience that. Well, first few months, we're going to these dead, dry churches. I don't know what to look for. The weekend, she's in Florida for a, I always mess it up, somebody's wedding, her brother's wedding. We'd had some neighbors that were going with us as we were checking out churches. Or our neighbor lady comes over this particular Sunday and she said, are you and Charlotte going to visit a new church today? And I said, well, Charlotte's in Florida for her brother's wedding. I'm going to check one out, but I'm not sure about it. It says Trinity Chapel Pentecostal Church of God. Had some dub with some flame stuff, I think. I don't know if it's some weird one or whatever, but I'm going to check it out. And she goes, well, Kevin, which was her husband's in the field, can I go with you? Well, I'm young and dumb. Her husband's in the field. My wife's in Florida. So I'm like, sure. So me and a neighbor lady go visit in this Pentecostal church for the first time. Uh -oh. So we come in, we sit down, the pastor's open up. Praise God, we got a new couple visiting with us today. Great to have you here. <laughs> We're giggling. <laughs> Full on, man, tongues, prophecy, Holy Ghost moving, blowing, going. I didn't run for the door being, quote, a former Presbyterian. I was like, I want more of this. <laughs> so we're leaving, and he goes, Praise God, great to have you and your wife here with us today. And I said, oh, she's not my wife. My wife's in Florida. Oh, he's not my husband. He's out in the field. He goes, okay, well, great to have you here today. Ended up, 
we joke about it now because we're still good friends. He's like, man, these people told us why these people really need Jesus. <laughs> Ended up, got water baptized, both filled with the Spirit, spoke in tongues there, called to ministry, started preaching. Got into all that, didn't blame on it, but we went all in. Amen. Some of y'all, just because you're even here, and I commend you on being here on a Tuesday night. Some of you, there's still areas in your life you're not going for it. It's real easy for us to wear that Christian mask. Praise God, brother. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Hallelujah. How are you? <laughs> Meanwhile, you're still taking way too many prescription pills because now you're addicted to them pain pills and you should. Uh -oh. God forbid. Mm. Hope there's nobody here, but some think they ain't smoked a pot. Uh -oh. Well, the Bible says he created every seed bearing herb and it was good. <laughs> I've heard people say that to try to justify know, smoking pot. <laughs> we create the ingredients. We make co they make cocaine. I don't. They make cocaine with. Doesn't mean God's for cocaine. That's right. <clears throat> but there's different areas of your life that, yeah, you may be sitting here born again. But there's other areas where your spiritual walk's concerned. You're backpedaling. Mm -hmm. Or you're compromising. And God's saying it's enough. And it's too many in his church body that are lukewarm. Yep. Yeah. We know in Revelation what he'll do with those. Yep. Spew right. you, vomit you out of his mouth. That's yeah. right. Too many that are cold, too many that are compromising. We think we got to act like the world to attract the world. Yeah. No, if we truly demonstrate the power of God, truly love one another, yeah, we're to love them too. Amen. But he said, they'll know you're my disciples because you're talking tongues and prophesy. No, they'll know you're my disciples because you love your love for one another. When we begin to truly love one another, love those outside of here, demonstrate the power of God outside of here, I praise God for what goes on in here. I praise God for what goes on in the firehouse church. But it isn't enough just to have a Holy Ghost party that just won't stop, but it stops when we go out the door. Whoa. We need to go out there and heal the sick. We need to go out there and cast out devils. You may say, well, my whole day would be busy. Just go to Walmart. Look around all the devil's up. <laughs> but we need to go outside the four walls of our church and demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom. Go for it. Yes. Amen. That's right. Yes. Mark 16 talks about these signs shall follow them that believe. Yes. Then say we're to chase them. If we believe in the name of Jesus, they shall lay hands on the sick and they recover. Shall speak in other tongues. The other ones talk about it's talking about taking on the devil. If they drink any deadly thing, it won't harm them. It doesn't mean go get some Drano. It always amazes me how those Pentecostal churches that do the snake handling, because they take they take that one out of context. Take up serpents. If you got enough faith, you won't die from it. Yet there's pastors doing that that have died from it. What amazes me that they don't they don't go drinking deadly poison. They'll take on a snake. We'll go drink some Drano. Let's see how much faith you got, doofus. <laughs> All through scripture I'll get back to some notes here So I'm not meddling as much <laughs> That's alright <laughs> Oh I got more of it Here this is just fire you up Here's some through scriptures Moses talking about going for it Moses did it in delivering the children of Israel From bondage Noah did it in building the ark. Abram did it when God told him to leave his land, leave his family, go to another country. And God would bless him to be a blessing. Yes. Joshua did it, marching around with the others six days and the seventh day shout and the walls came down. He went for it. Yes. David did it when as a young boy he slayed that giant when all them chicken little soldiers that were trained and all that took off running. He went for it. Yes. Daniel did it when he refused to obey the king's command that for 30 days you couldn't petition or pray to any other man or God but to the king. He went for it and kept praying for his God. And look what God did for him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did it when they refused to bow to the king. They said, I'm going for it. I'm only worshiping one God. I'm worshiping Jehovah. And God, would, even in the midst of that fire, when it was turned up, what, seven times higher? And I see a fourth man in there looks like the Son of God. Their deliverance came because they went for it. 
Some of you, your healing hasn't come. Your deliverance hasn't come. Your breakthrough hasn't come. You haven't got full on, even brought out of the fire because you're not full on going for it. Amen. Again, it's the one step forward. Oh, the enemy's come against me. Two steps back. <laughs> you're never going to move forward and get to the end result if we keep doing that. My Bible tells me, it says, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. What's always mean? My dictionary always means always. But you've got to continue to follow him. You may not like the path he's taking you down. Well, if you follow him, he's leading you to triumph. You don't know how many people along the way you're going to touch. You're going to impact. I love y'all's praise. I love the way y'all worship. We do the same thing at the Firehouse Church. And I encourage ours, you don't know, regardless of how you feel, you don't know how much your worship can bless the one sitting next to you. Especially when they know you're going through a mess right now. Especially when they know you just lost a loved one. Or your children are fighting sickness and disease or you're going through a divorce or whatever it is. But you're worshiping God and praising Amen. God anyway. That's and right. sitting there, how can they do that? Yeah. That's a bigger witness than... Amen. Let me read the Romans Road to you, brother. <laughs> Nothing wrong with witnessing and we should and sharing scripture with people. But your life is a witness. That's right. Every day. And when people see you worshiping God and praising God and living it out, yeah, yeah. believing God for the dessert, even though you're going through the desert, yeah. that's a witness to people. Yeah. That's a testimony to people. Yeah. January of last year, we had a grandson that was, uh, he was born, but we knew how many months into it? My daughter was 16 weeks and through an ultrasound found out there was a whole lot of issues with his heart, his head, did all these tests. Has some genetic disorder. The odds of him even her even carrying him full term wow. in and of themselves was small. Mm -hmm. But even if he was born, he could have this, that, and all the other. Mm -hmm. And they put abortion on the table. And even though my daughter and son and all this particular one aren't living for God right now, at least thank God it was in her Amen. the years that we put in her and she couldn't do it Amen. and wouldn't do it. Amen. But 28 or 30 hours after birth, we had to release him to the Lord because everything they said could go wrong, did go wrong, and more. Mm -hmm. Even though we prayed, we believed, we stood. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But that didn't change the fact that God still heals. Yeah. That God's still a miracle yeah. worker. Well, he didn't do that for you. God knows what I don't know. Because yeah. my daughter even said all along, if he's not, because they said even if he does live prior to him being born, he could have this issues and da-da-da-da-da. And, you know, he won't even realize he's got another brother and all this kind of stuff. And my daughter, and I, I understand it. She says, I can't raise a child like that. Can't handle that. Some people aren't made for that. Amen. So she still got an answer, even though it wasn't necessarily the answer that she had. Mm -hmm. And when they told us, this is it. This is all you got. He never cried. Well, from the first time we saw him, he was just wires and everything else, total life support and all that, did all these tests. Finally came, this is his life, basically. My daughter and son-in-law can't do it. I'm not putting him through any of this. Da 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 da. They went in and said their goodbyes. Uh, the doctors and all that explained that one of us will hold him till he passes away. Blah 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 blah. I said, well, can we go in and see him? We got okay with the daughter and so on. Yeah, that's fine. Went in there and I'm like, no, nah, ain't nobody else holding him. Charlotte and my other daughter were there and they thought we're just going in and say our goodbye. I said, ain't nobody else holding my grandson that I even held yet till he goes to be with Jesus. And both her and my daughter kind of looked at first. We're all you're numb. But yet this is where you see what you're made of. Yeah. Held him. Prayed over him. And she was ready. Held him. And the day that we released him to the Lord was the day before her birthday. Let that one sink in. And I knew this was a woman of faith. I, we've been married, by the way, June 20th, 38 years. Amen. We're together four years prior to that. She was 15, I was seven, or 14, and I was 16 when we met. So when she was 18 and I was 20, we got married. I've seen the faith in this woman. And she sat there holding Jace, our grandson, through tears, thanking the Lord for blessing her with such a beautiful birthday gift. Amen. He's dying. We surrendered him to the Lord. Nurses and the few that were in there just crying. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're crying too, but it's 
Next day, I'm on. We got a couch in the back of the sanctuary, and I don't even know why I'm getting into all this. Not in my thing, but I'm laying on the couch in the back of the sanctuary and said, "Lord, I don't understand." Our whole church prayed. We fasted. We believed. Did everything we know to do. Said, "I don't understand, but all I know to do is worship you." Hallelujah. And I had my phone laying there, and I put on whatever YouTube videos or whatever. Just start praying worship videos, and through tears, laid on the couch in the yeah. back of the sanctuary. Yeah. And I know the presence. I know we're the church and all that, but there can still be, and there is, a lingering presence yeah. from the worship that takes place and the prayer that takes yeah. place. Yeah. I had two people in my church that called me. Pastor, I know y'all have just gone through a lot. If you guys want to stay home, recoup, that I'll preach Sunday for you, two of them. And I'm like, no, I need to preach. Amen. My healing's going to be in that. Amen. And I got up that Sunday, and I said, if that stinking devil thinks for a second, right. he's got my faith. If he thinks for a second, I'm going to back off from believing God for healings and miracles. He's even dumber than I already know that he is. Because Jesus is still Savior. Jesus is still here. Jesus is still deliver. And I forget, forget the message I preached. Now I preached a powerful message even if half of it was through tears. And the church you know, gathered around us and all that. Amen. Amen. But I think how I started getting that is one of the elders in the church. And it was a while later. I was talking about your witness and all that. Said, Pastor, you don't know how much, how y'all have responded and walked through this has ministered to us, your body, your his local church body. And that right there blessed me. Because it isn't about us, it's about him. Yeah. But we're to lead by example. Yeah. So even through that hurt, that pain, that brokenness. Mm -hmm. The testimony is it in it. Well, my daughter already had one son. She'd had three miscarriages prior to losing him. Had another one miscarriage after that. We just found out two weeks ago she's pregnant again. Yeah. Most all the miscarriages she'd lose six, seven weeks. She's now twelve weeks. Did a blood test. It's a girl, hallelujah. And there's nothing showing messed up at all in the blood. We'll be normal. They're actually gonna name her JC. I don't know what the middle name is yet. But the boy was Jace, but naming the, her their daughter JC. But God. See, they had to, and even though they're not living for God right now, they still had to go for it. Yes. And continuing to go for it. And we're continuing to go for it. Yeah. So again, continue to go for it. Yes. There's going to be losses. There's going to be tragedies. There's going to be things you don't understand. We've had it as fired up as our, and we got a fired up church. Yeah. I've had people over the years that sickness, disease, we prayed, we believe God. And we've seen some get healed, and we've seen some go home to be with Jesus. But I'm not moved by what I see in the natural. I'm moved by what thus right. says the word of the Lord. Amen. So I'll continue to pray. I continue to lay hands on the sick. Continue to go for it Amen. and believe in God for signs, wonders, healings, and miracles. Yes. I don't care if it's one out of ten that gets healed. I've heard how uh, Heidi Baker, mightily used of God in uh, overseas in Africa somewhere, Amen. went to uh, Canada when they had that, uh, whatever it's called, the big Father's Day or the... Toronto blessing. Got powerfully ministered to, prophesied over that. God was going to use her mighty in healing. She prayed for over a hundred deaf people, and not a one got healed. And all of a sudden, one day, I think it was 101 or one particular day, prayed for this one deaf girl, and her name even happened to be Heidi, got healed. And from then on, it was like the floodgates were open. If you quit going for it, you don't know what you've missed out on. So whether it's ministry, whether it's healing the sick, Casting out devils, job, mm -hmm. business. Some of y'all got business on the inside of you. What are you doing with it? Go for it. Yeah. I've twice. I had an appraisal business years ago. Did it for several years. God tremendously blessed me in it. Years later, and we ended up after that, went through a bankruptcy, lost everything. Again, you see what you're made of. All right. Continued serving God, pastoring the church at the same time. But God started restoring had another job opportunity to open up. And through a lot of this, and everybody's different, but he spoke to me years ago, and even when I got stripped of the appraisal business, and he spoke to her first. I've called him to full-time ministry. He's too divided because I'm terrific. Yeah. And, he goes, and he flat out told her, you're going to lose everything, wow. but I'm doing a work in you. Amen. And I'm like, Lord, this don't make sense. i got a church of like 40, 50 people. And after the bankruptcy and all that, went down to about 20 or 25. It don't make a lick of sense. But we started all over financially, so that helped some. But, and then I dab, tried dabbling in this or that, and most craziest things would happen. 
But the Lord wouldn't let me do it. But during this one period of time, he did. It's when the market went south and all that, and a bunch of foreclosures, bankruptcies, opportunity open for me to inspect homes. This one company called, and they had several counties in Ohio that they needed covered. And it was going to be mega bucks. And they said, can you handle this? And I said, let me, can you give me a little bit of time? Well, we got to know today. I said, all right, I go on Craigslist, posted an ad because I knew where all I was. I hired 12 people off a of Craigslist in two hours. <coughs> and for, I think, four months, five months, six months, just I had to go for it, went for it, was able to pay off every bit of debt that we had, had tax liens from back when I had the appraisal company on our current house from school uh, taxes that were unpaid and some other. Just being honest. Didn't think, you know, we just float around. Yeah. Three, four months able to pay every bit of it off. But even then, I had to go for it. So if God's been placing business, then you go for it. Again, me, even that, he only let me do it so long. And it's like, poop, get out of here. I didn't even share this with them. Still haven't really, but she knows. Last year, you know, I get frustrated because, again, kind of got some debt and all that. It's like, now I get this paid off. I'm just going to do DoorDash. Do you all have DoorDash up here? Mm-hmm. It's where you, yeah. you kind of work all that. You can make 15, 18 hours just driving around in your car. I mean, it's easy peasy. So I thought, cool, I'll do this. I'm just going to pay off some debt, Jesus. Didn't hear anything. So I'm thinking, he's cool with it. Did it like three or four days. All of a sudden, I get hit with a brutal sinus infection. We get down to Dallas, Texas for Jerry Savelle's minister's conference we usually go to. I'm sick, miserable the whole week. And even there, she's like, you think maybe you shouldn't have took that job? And I just look at her. Okay, Holy Ghost Junior. Then it ended up, and God didn't put it on me, but his hand of blessing and protection will come off when you get out in disobedience. Then it ends up going into Bronx kind of sick for three months. Guess what I haven't done since? But for those of you that God has called to it, business, or again, even ministry. God, if you're called to ministry, you can rebel, reject it, run all you want. Try to do business, right. jobs, and all that other. You're going to be miserable. Right. Miserable as miserable can be until you submit, surrender to the Lord. Amen. Okay, I need to get back on this. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, I already got on there. You need to go for it. Start obeying God, not compromising. Uh, Esther, she decided to go for it when she approached the king without invitation to save her people. She rescued death, or risked death. Nehemiah did it in rebuilding the walls of the temple, even the, or the temple even when they had much opposition. The disciples went for it time and time again, preaching in the name of Jesus, even though they were arrested, told not to do it anymore, but would say, we got to obey God, not man. Peter and John had to go for it with the man begging outside the temple. When I said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They had to go for it. You just got to go for it. Now, wisdom, again, that doesn't mean every lame person you see go up and jerk them up out of a wheelchair. You need to be letting the Lord in it. But when the Lord speaks and says, go for it. Again, I heard somebody recently, and I used it tonight. When God reveals it, he's going to heal it. So when God speaks something to you, he's going to do it. You just got to go for it. Amen. Step out in faith, believing that he's going to meet you there. Amen. Apostle Paul went for it time and time again. Snake bitten, stone. <laughs> no, stone. Jailed, left for dead. Shipwrecked. But he kept going for it. Yeah. What giants is God calling you to conquer? What land is he calling you to possess? What people is he calling you to help deliver? Yeah. <laughs> you just need to go for it. It's time for those of us that are hungry for a move of God to go for it. I said it's time for those that want a genuine move of God, full-blown revival, to go for it. The end of 2018, the Lord spoke to me and said 2019 will be a year of rebounding, restoration, and revival. I preached a, a short version of it, New Year's Eve, and then the first three Sundays in January on rebounding. means to get back up. Some of you need to go for it and get back up. Bounce back. Rebound from whatever knocked you down. Restoration. Things have been stolen from you. Could be health. Could be finances, relationships. Whatever it is, God's wanting to restore it. When God restores it, it's a whole lot more than what you lost. You need to go for it this year and believe in God for restoration. 
And then he said revival. I'm going for it where revival is concerned. Whether it happens and I'm believing God for it in a firehouse church or not, or whether it's in India or Pakistan or here or wherever God sends me, I don't care, but I know I'm going for it where revival is concerned. And I'm believing God that something's getting deposited here tonight. Yeah. Yes, praise God, y'all are on fire. We're on fire. Can't wait till this man of God comes down to our church. Throw some gasoline on our fire. That's what we're wanting to do tonight is throw some gasoline Amen. on your fire. Whole nother level here. And when he comes, a whole nother level there. Praise God. Some of you, the Lord has promotion in store for you, but you need to go for it. Get out of your box. Well, I'm comfortable right here. This is, the, can be, or used to be more so the box queen. Don't stretch me, Lord. I, you, you wouldn't know her years ago. We'd go when I was first getting ministry credentials. I'd preach in different churches. Sister Charlotte, do you play the piano? No. Sister Charlotte, do you want? No. So then they, well, Sister Charlotte, do you want to testify? She'd stand up. I just praised Jesus today. I'm saved or something and sit back down. That was all you got out of her. I hope these people, we'd go to another church. I hope these people don't ask me to testify. You're not thankful for what God's done for you. Yeah, but I don't feel like getting up in front of people. That's for you. Then she'd sing back around. I'll just be a doo-wop sister. A doo-wop? Now she leads our worship. At the end of it, man, she's singing in tongues and worshiping and prophesying a whole other level. But she had to go for it. And everybody's yes. different. Some are quicker to go for it. Some take longer. I encourage you, the quicker you are to go for it, the quicker you'll get the blessing and the reward from it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go over some of this like, real quick. Luke chapter 5. This I will read. And the rest I'll just throw it out there. You'll just have to catch it. I'll preach quick. Y'all listen quick. Luke chapter 5 verse 4. Previously, Jesus had been using Peter's boat and preaching. It says, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, say, when they had done this. When they had done this. When they went for it. When they went for it. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. Their net was breaking, so they signaled. And I heard this from somebody at one of Rodney Howard Brown's things, but it's for an offering thing, but it was good. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both the boats, so they, be both, or they began to sink. At Jesus' word, despite the natural circumstances, he went for it. And look at the harvest that came forward. At Jesus' word, church, if you'll go for it, He's given you His word tonight. Yes. If you'll go for it, you'll receive a greater blessing than you can even contain, that you can even imagine or can even handle. Yes. Not gonna, I'm not going to turn it, but Matthew 9 talks about the woman with the issue of blood. She went for it. She had to go for it. Spent all that she had on physicians. Suffered 12 years. Shouldn't even been in public. But she said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. She went for it and got her healing. You need to go for it and get your healing. Amen. And I know we already prayed for many of you tonight. There still may be others here. I tell our people, or wherever I'm at, I don't care how many times you've been anointed with oil, how many times you've had hands laid on you, you don't know when may be your night. You just got to continue to go for it and believe God. Yes. Several years ago, I used to have migraines when I was in the military. They, well, when you get a migraine, take this pill. And I take this pill. Might have well took baby aspirin. Didn't do squat. Well, then tried this one. Didn't do squat. That means didn't do nothing. <laughs> and then they put me on this one. I still remember. It's called Enderol. It was like a heart medicine. I gradually had to get on it. Supposedly changes the way blood goes through your vessels or arteries or something or other. And they said, if you ever get off of this, you need to wean off of it or you can have a heart attack. Well, that's good news. Thank you, Jesus, for putting me on something like this. <laughs> And I, our pastor prayed for me. Deacons had prayed for me. She prayed for me. I prayed for me. Come on. <laughs> one Sunday morning, our pastor preached a message. And it was one that the guy wanted his son, I think, healed or delivered. Jesus said, do you believe I'm able to do this? And he said, yes, I believe, but help my unbelief. Amen. At that moment, that's where I was at. I believe God could. But I've been prayed for so many times. Pain so brutal. Nothing was working. But I was still, there was some unbelief. Well, faith rose up that particular day. He called people down for prayer. 
Just like several other times, I came down for prayer and laid his hand on me. God healed, never had a migraine since. Amen. And in my foolishness, though, I quit immediately taking those pills. But newsflash, I'm here, never had a heart attack. I don't recommend you do that, but, but I had to go for it. I had to get up that one more time and believe God that when I was prayed for, my healing was going to come. Amen. So I encourage you where that's concerned, whether you receive yours tonight or not. Yeah. He gives an altar call for it. Go for it. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. believe in for full-blown revival and outpouring, whether it happens tonight or not. Keep going for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, real quick, then I am closing. Okay, how do we go for it? Number one, you've got to have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Those that come to God must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. That's going for it. Yeah. So you've got to have faith. You Number two, you've got to trust in the Lord. Yeah. Peter had to trust in the Lord. If it's you, command me to come. So you've got to trust in the Lord. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, knowing He'll direct your path. So if you're going to go for it, you've got to trust the Lord. You've got to trust that the Lord does have your best interests at heart. Yes. You've got to trust that the thoughts, the plans that God has for you are not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. Yeah. Number three, you've got to be willing to go for it when he tells you to go for it. Yes. Again, Simon Peter, God, if it's you, command me to come. He commanded him to come. He went. Don't sit here lollygagging around. Well, I know he said to go. <laughs> Had five confirmations. Even went to Revivals West. He told me, yeah, go. You can do it. And you still No, when God says go for it, go for it. Amen. <laughs> Four, don't look with your natural eyes and try to figure it all out. Amen. Don't look with your natural eyes and try to figure it out. Again, even when my ministry is, even now, with the size of church I have, it doesn't make a lick of sense in the national for me to be full-time ministry. But the ones I got, I got good givers. Our landlord, praise God, hasn't raised our rent in five years. And they've been there. Some of y'all have a nice building where we're at and all that. God's taking care of us. He's meeting our needs. And again, as I said, when I Trump still tried to step out, thought I was going to help God out. Door dash. He gets sick for three months. I learned my lesson there. But don't look with your natural eyes and try to figure it out. Even when God's and again, I'm getting ready at the end of this month. Yeah, we're in July now. Going to India. Going to one area. Going to preach four nights of crusades. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. And then that Sunday morning, I'm also preaching in two or three churches. Help me, Jesus. Amen. Monday, not sure what all we're doing yet. I think part of Monday is going to be going to a leper colony camp. Probably praying for people there. And then we're going to do a feeding thing. Tuesday, a pastor's conference. And that evening, going to another city, preaching a crusade. Then the next day in that city, pastor's conference, and that night a crusade, and I know he's done a lot of this and a whole lot more, and then finally I'll be coming back. What well, takes, I got to go for it. Yes. And stepping out. Yes. Yes. And I mean, I'll do, and he probably does too, Facebook, get all kinds of invites to different nations and stuff. I only do it when I know I've heard the Lord say do it. Amen. And this Amen. one, he didn't use the word per se, go for it. But that's in essence of what he said. Mm. Every time I've stepped out and went for it, I've been to India previously, been to Pakistan previously. Every time I've went for it, he's met the need. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, he uses all kinds of people, but he's met the need in ways that blow my mind. Yeah. But I had to go for it. Yeah. But you can't look at the natural eyes, figure it out. Again, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah. Number five, you've got to stay dependent on the Lord. Yeah. You have to stay dependent on the Lord. The minute you think you got it all, you can do it all, yeah. forget it. Again, yes, Simon Peter got his eyes off Jesus. <laughs> Looked at the storm, but he was dependent on him because Jesus reached down and he took him by the hand and rescued him. You need to stay dependent on the Lord. Church, we're to go for it. Yeah. God is calling Cleveland Revival Center to go for it. Yeah. He's calling you to go for it as a corporate body. Yeah. And exactly what that means, that will come primarily through them. Your leaders. Yeah. And when they get that word, go for it, whatever it is, is y'all need to join in unison in that vision and step up and go for it. And your individual lives, if it's ministry, he's been speaking to you about help here, go for it. Quit sitting back, wasting your gifts, your talents, your ability, your anointing. Go for it. Whether it's a job, a business, or whatever, time to go for it. Believe in God for your healing. Go for it. What do you got to lose? Right. 
That's my thing. What do I got to lose with another sweaty palm put on my forehead? Go for it. Amen. Believe in God for signs, wonders, and miracles. Go for it. Believe in God for revival. Go for it. And even tonight, I'm believing. I thank God for the fire that's here. Man, he was boiling over there. And if I was any indication of what God's wanting to release in this house tonight, yeah. it's going to be another step up. Yeah. But y'all need to be willing to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, how are we going to kind of end all this? All I know is God wants you to go for it. And I guess if there's anybody else that needs healing, we'll pray for you for that. Otherwise, I know we're to release some fire, throw yes. some gasoline, if you will, on the fire that's here tonight. And let's go for it. Yes. Let's go for full-blown revival, Cleveland Revival Center. Let's go for a fire that cannot be quenched, that will not be quenched. Let's believe God for a full-blown outpouring. Hallelujah. Just a, the Holy Spirit just to wreck you. Simon Peter, again, they all got wrecked. And then the Holy Spirit rebuilt them into what he wanted them to be. Amen. Some of you need pride. Shook off you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. I was watching Pastor Charlotte, man. I don't know if I want to. Well, it's funny. Years ago, we went to the Brownsville Bible in Pensacola in the 90s. And people would do a lot of that. She's like, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> Here she is 20-some years later. <laughs> Woo! And all this crazy stuff. And I just, never say never. Never say never. <laughs> but she's gone for it. She wants everything God has for her. I'm going for it. I want everything that God has for me. I know they're going for it. They want everything God has for them. And I put my pride aside. I don't care what I look like years ago because I just want all God that has for me. If I look like a fool to some people, whoop de do. But I'm getting my joy. I'm getting my strength. I'm getting my healing. I'm getting my breakthrough. I'm getting everything that God has for me. I'm going all the way in. Some of you, it's go all the way in the river tonight. Amen. How many of you ready to go for it? Thank you. So have